Good morning, everyone. My name is Fei Yu. I'm a second year PhD student and a member of Center for Human Computer Interaction at Virginia Tech. Today, it's my pleasure to be here and present to you our paper entitled Ansible AI Evaluating Information Access Methods for Headworn Augmented Reality. Before I start, I would like to thank my colleagues, Shakiba, Li Yuan, and my supervisor, Dr. Bowman, for their continuous guidance and support throughout the project. So firstly, let's talk, let's talk about motivation. We encounter a variety of information needs every day. We need information about the weather, our to-do list, our calendar events to determine our executions of everyday activities. Mobile phones provide convenient ways to access information, but it could be cumbersome when our hands are occupied by the tasks. And smartwatches guarantee high availability of the information as a wearable device, but it also conveys limited amount of information due to its small screen size. An AR headphone displays has been long envisioned by previous researchers as a device that will ultimately become much like or even replace or even replace mobile phones as a future way of, of obtaining information. AI users will wear AR glasses every day, viewing and interacting with virtual information to assist their personal computations. With the recent advancements of AR headphone displays, we are getting closer to the immediate future than ever before. Previous research has explored AR as a possibility to display general information. For example, AR Win is a system that overlay virtual information on, on a real-world desktop through image targets. The strict word fixed layout does not allow mobility of the information. And recent research by Legis and Bowman on adaptive walking interface has shed light on how AR can allow users to bring their workspace with them while walking. Their result emphasized that it is important that virtual information does not block users from seeing the real world behind it when, you, when users want to. So since future AR displays will is likely to be an always on device, how to present information in an unobtrusive but easily accessible way still remains an open question. In this research, to fill this gap, we propose Glanceable AR, a paradigm for intera uh, an interaction paradigm for accessing information in headphone displays. So according to Matthews et al., Glanceable interfaces allow users to access and understand information with a quick glance. And we distill four design principles based on previous literatures. The first design principle is virtual content should be fixed to the user to ensure high availability of the information. The second design principle is virtual content should be specially distributed in the periphery, so you, uh, the information won't be overloaded and user can use their special memory to access the information they need. The third design principle is the interaction to access the virtual content should be hands-free because hands are most likely to be occupied in everyday activities. And we think that head-based or gaze-based interactions are promising ways to interact with future head one displays. And the last design principle is the information should be accessed by glancing quickly at the periphery. We propose three different interfaces under the glance AR paradigm. The first interface is eye glance interface. Even though we call it eye glance, it does not involve any eye tracking. So that the contents are display fixed and they reside at the periphery of the field of view. To access the content, you just need to turn your eye and look at the content. And that's why we call it eye glance interface. It ensures high awareness of information because no matter where the, the user is looking at, the information is always visible. But information could also, also be cluttered and occluding user from seeing the real world behind it. The second interface we propose is called the head glance interface. So the interfaces are body fixed and they are invisible in the forward direction. They are distributed in the forward directions in the periphery. To access the information, users need to turn their head to the direction of their, of their periphery to look at the content. For example, if users want to know information about the weather, they just need to look up at the sky so they can see the weather information. And the last interface is what we call the summer interface. So similar to the eye glance interface, the contents are display fixed. And they're initially invisible, but they're represented by translucent visual targets at the periphery of the field of view. To access the content, users just need to gaze at the visual targets for 0.5 seconds. For example, if users need to know something about the weather, they just need to look at the purple visual target at the top for 0.5 seconds. So they can summon the weather information to their field of view so they can look at the information. And this is our hypothesized trade-offs among the interfaces. So iGlans provides high accessibility and awareness of information by making them always visible and obtrusive. And the gaze summer interfaces uh, represent information by translucent view targets, which make information kind of obtrusive, and users have to turn their eyes to look at the content to summon the information, which lower the awareness of information. And head glance interface make information highly unobtrusive by making them invisible in the forward direction. But users also have to turn their head to look at the content, which lowers the accessibility and awareness of the, of the information. So in, in this study, our main goal is to validate the trade-offs that we propose among the interfaces. 
in a dual task setting. So we use the Magic Leap 1 headset and the internal eye tracking sensors to, to implement the interfaces. And to evaluate the interfaces, we design a dual task scenario in which we just have to do a primary task, which is walk for two minutes, uh, and they have to follow a virtual human and keep an idea distance from the virtual human. And the virtual human will be walking at a predefined path in the room, and it will be changing speed randomly. And at the same time, we will place obstacles, which are these long blooms on the ground, and users have to try to avoid them, step over them, not to step on them. And when they are doing the primary task, there will be a secondary task. And we have two different types of secondary tasks. The first one is we call discretionary task. So in this task, the program will be randomly asking user questions about the glance of information. There will be in total 12 questions in a two minutes walking. And users have to respond to the questions, uh, verbally say the answer to the questions as quickly as possible. And the next kind of secondary task is the monitoring task. So in this task, instead of looking at the virtual content when the program asks them to, they need to keep continuous attention to a piece of basketball scoreboard. And they have to report the lead change whenever as, as quickly as they observe one. And there will be eight lead changes in the total in the two-minute walking task. And in this experiment, we recruited 18 participants, four females with a mean age of 20 years old. And we use a gradient subject design. We have three different interfaces, the eye glance, head glance, and click summon. And we have two different types of secondary tasks, the discretionary and the monitoring, getting a total of six different conditions. And the whole experiment took 60 minutes in total. To measure the user performance, to measure the primary task performance, we have the distance keeping score, in which we counted the time that the user spent in too close or too far regions from the robot. So the lower the distance keeping score, the better the walking performance. We also counted how many blooms the user uh, are not able to avoid. And for the secondary task, for the, discretionary, for the discretionary task, we measured how much time it took for user to answer a question after one was asked by the program. And for the monitoring task, we measured how much time it took the user to report the lead change after one actually happened. And for subjective feedback, we had the system usability scale questionnaire, we had the NASA TLX workflow questionnaire, we also had a post questionnaire asking users about their, their, their thoughts and what they like or dislike about the interfaces. And to ensure a more comprehensive qualitative analysis, we also had implemented a playback system in which we logged user eye position, head position, and the virtual human position 10 times per second. And we can reconstruct the walking experiment for later user behaviors, observations of user behaviors. And we tested four hypotheses in this study. The first hypothesis is in a discretionary task, we think that the glance and gain some interfaces will be more preferred compared to eye glance interfaces, and they will lead to higher, better walking performance. The reason we think this is because the head glance and gain some interfaces are very unobtrusive, which ensure that the user can focus on the walking task. And this is our result. So the H1A hypothesis is not supported because the preference were pretty much distributed. We didn't find any clear tendency towards favoring, a specific in, uh, towards favoring a specific interface. And for the walking performance, we didn't find any significant differences. So H1B was also not supported. And the second hypothesis we have is about the information access speed. We think head glance and eye glance interface will result in higher information access speed because of the 0.5 second dual time of the gaze sum interface. And our results supported this hypothesis because we found that eye glance and head glance interfaces were significantly faster compared to the case of interfaces in answering the questions task. The third hypothesis we have is in the monitoring task in which users are asked to pay continuous attention to a piece of information. The head glance and eye glance interface will be more preferred than gaze sum interface and they will lead to better working performance because the eye tracking feature of the case on interface will draw user attention away from the walking task when they, monitor, when they monitor a piece of content. And our result partially supported hypothesis 3A because there is a clear tendency towards favoring eye glance interface, um, but we didn't find any tendency towards favoring head glance or case on interface. And also in the walking performance, head glance users perform significantly worse than eye glance users, which didn't support our hypothesis 3B. And in the last hypothesis, 
we think that the head glance and eye glance interfaces will result in significantly less time to report the lead changes. And our results show didn't support this hypothesis because we didn't find any significant differences in the time it took to report the lead changes in the monitoring task. So in conclusion, we found that head glance and eye glance interfaces could lead to faster acquisitions of information. The eye glance interfaces resulted in superior walking task performance than head glance in the monitoring task. And eye glance interfaces was also more preferred when continuous attention was desired on a piece of virtual content. So although it, look, it, it looks like our result favored eye glance interfaces in different ways, but there is a question, is eye glance really the best interface among the three? And we don't think so because here is the comment we gathered from participants. And participants like the iGrants interface because it's simple, it's fast, it's easy to access. But they also don't like it because they think it's cluttered, they, like the information is crowded, and they're, they're occluding them from seeing the real world. And while the head glance, it ensured best visibility of the real world by making information nearby, but never in your face. However, participants also commented that they think it is tedious for repeated usages because it takes their eyes off the working task when, when accessing information. And this is the TLX workload. Um, it turns out that the head glance resulted in higher mental workload and frustration compared to eye glance in a discretionary task. So in both discretionary and monitoring tasks, our study involved heavy usages of the interfaces in a short period of time, which lead to increased mental workload and frustration, but it's not likely to happen in everyday scenarios. Similarly, gaze some interfaces Participants like it because they think it's cool, it's, it's futuristic, it has good visibility of the real world without the need, they can access the information without the need to move head or body. But they also don't like it because of eye strain and sometimes false positive happens because the tracking is not perfect. And also it's not suitable for monitoring tasks. And we also found that the case of interfaces could result in higher mental workload than the eye glance interface. And when being asked whether the number of windows will affect their preferences on, on the interfaces, 14 out of 18 participants gave a positive response. They think that more windows will make them favor the eye glance less because it will just be more cluttered. They will, it, the interface will just be more obtrusive and blocking them from seeing the real world. But they think head glance would be a good option for having more windows because no matter how many windows they, they have, it will be never be in, be in their face. And the case of interface would work worse when there are more windows because they will just be more visual targets. In, interface. And the reason that we think people favor the eye glance more is because the working task that we choose is not demanding in the periphery, which, de which could diminish the unobtrusive advantages of head glance and gaze some interfaces. So as a result, we still think that glance aware interfaces are promising approaches that need further exploration. And back to our hypothesized trade-offs. We map, we map accessibility, awareness, and unobtrusiveness of information to discretionary monitoring and working task performance accordingly. And the iGrants interface did not result in worse working performance, which indicates that it was not that obtrusive as we thought. And we did not find difference in time to report the changes in the monitoring task, which indicates, although not as good as, not, although not as, good as iGrants, headgrants and case summon could also provide some level of awareness of information. And iGrants, the head glance interface was proved to be as fast as eye glance in acquisition of information, which raised our hypothesized accessibility from low to medium. In contrast, gaze summon was proved to be low in accessibility since it resulted in significantly slower information acquisitions. So these properties are only result for this walking experiment, and we expect them to be different in different, in different primary tasks. For future work, um, we plan to increase the unobtrusiveness of information further by the comments we gathered from participants while still providing efficient information acquisition. So our proposed solution is what we call head glance plus interface in which you use gaze steps to access the information. So information are represented by little dots, little unobtrusive dots. And if the user are looking behind the virtual dots, they will not see the virtual content, but they have to converge their gaze at the depth of the virtual dot to make the content appear. And this is a video demonstration. And also we think that walking is a simple task and low in cognitive load. And in the future, we plan to test the interface in a more demanding scenario that requires attention in the periphery, for example, driving in a simulator.
And that's all for our presentation. Thank you for listening.